Happy Sabbath, church. Happy Sabbath, church. Sounding like we didn't eat any breakfast this morning. One more time. Happy Sabbath, church. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Amen. So I'm pretty sure we're all familiar with today's theme, Follow the Leader. Before I begin, let us pray. Dear Most Kind and Righteous Father, Lord, once more I want to thank you for letting us be here despite the weather outside. Thank you for letting us get here safe and cover us all. Help us to learn something from this sermon today. Let me not be seen, but you be seen, Lord. Speak through me. Use me as a vessel. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. When you have an encounter with Jesus, you cannot keep it to yourself. You must tell your friends. Let's take a quick look at one such encounter where paths intersect. Once again, Jesus went out beside the lake. A large crowd came to him, and he began to teach them. As he walked along, he saw Levi, son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, Jesus told him, and Levi got up and followed him. Here we see Jesus and Levi meeting briefly. The Bible does not say what they talked about, but we know they talked. Levi was sitting at his tax collector's booth, and Jesus went and spoke, spoke with him. While the Bible does not tell us what they spoke about, we know it was enough to make Levi, the hustling tax collector, give up everything to follow him. All he said was, follow me. And just like that, Levi followed him. But he does not keep it to himself. He threw a Jesus party. Yes, he did. While Jesus was having dinner at Levi's house, many tax collectors and sinners were eating with him and his disciples, for there were many who followed him. When the teachers of the law, who were Pharisees, saw him eating with the sinners and tax collectors, they asked his disciples, why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said to them, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but the sinners. Believe me, it is that simple. You tell people about Jesus, and they follow him. It's not complicated at all. Real simple. Once you live a life of holiness and follow Jesus, people will see it in you. They will want to follow you. But let's look a little closer at what Mark did. Not only did he throw Jesus a big party, he went out and invited all his friends to the party. When you encounter Jesus, you cannot keep it to yourself. You must tell others about him. May this be more than just another sermon for you. May you feel a burden and passion to invite others to meet Jesus. Invite them to have an encounter with him. Will you follow Mark's example today? Invite your family, your friends, and your associates to meet Jesus. He's waiting for them. We are all, we are at a crossroads in our lives. We need the Lord more than ever. As we read the stories of these biblical characters, let us ask God to help us to examine our own characters. Let us come to God like Jacob did. Wrestle with God until he blesses you. Speaking of Jacob, God took him on a very interesting journey to work on his character, to show that he can take a crooked character and make it straight. Jacob stole his own twin brother Esau's birthright, and when Esau found out, Jacob had to run away from home. He ran away to his, to his uncle, Laban, fell in love with his daughter, Rachel, and had to work seven years to get her as a wife. Seven years. The morning after the wedding, he discovered that he was tricked. He had married the older sister, Leah. He had to work an additional seven years for Rachel a total of 14 years for the two wives. Can you imagine? He spent a total of 20 years in Laban's house, and during those 20 years, God was able to work on his character. He had to be molded like the clay in the potter's hand. He had to seek God privately for himself. Even after God makes a covenant with us, we cannot guarantee how he's going to work on our character. That's for God to choose, not us. God wants us to draw closer to him, to be our everything. That's what he wants, an intimate, abiding relationship with us. Let us put away the pride, arrogance, self-sufficiency, and indifference. God resists the proud. Does that mean he no longer loves us? No, he still loves us. But the Bible says pride will always make God pull back from us. 
Lord, we know that you left heaven and came down for the needy and the brokenhearted. And today we come to you broken and, broken and desperate. We want to serve you. We want to love you every minute of every day. We want to praise you every day. Help us, Jesus. Help us to appreciate your sacrifice. We cannot change our lives, Lord, but you can. Please help us to recognize our great need of you and praise you with our whole heart. The spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free. Jesus goes out of the way to meet people. Yes, he meets us exactly where we are. When you have an encounter with Jesus, you cannot keep it to yourself. You must tell your friends. Let's take a quick look at another such encounter where paths intersect. Now, he had to go through Samaria, so he came down in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given, to his son, had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from his journey, sat down by the well. It was about noon. When a Samarian woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, will you give me a drink? In this encounter, we see Jesus going out of his way to meet the lady at the well. How often do we read of Jesus being tired? But Jesus was sitting at the well waiting just for this moment. Here it is again. Just like the encounter with Mark, we see Jesus having a conversation. This time, however, the Bible gives us an insight into the conversation. Sam the Samarian woman said to him, you're a Jew and I'm a Samarian woman. How can you ask me for a drink? Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Amen. Believe me, it is that simple. Just tell people the truth about the living water and what it can do for them. It's not that complicated. Real simple. Tell them the truth about sin, but don't embarrass them. Start a conversation. Let them see that what they're doing is wrong. Don't be rude. Look at how sensitive Jesus was to this woman's situation. He told her, go call your husband and come back. I have no husband, she replied. Jesus said to her, you are right when you say you have no husband. The fact is you had five husbands and the man you now have is not your husband. What you have said is quite true. Sir, the woman said, I can see that you're a prophet. When you encounter Jesus, you leave everything and follow him. Then leaving her water jar, the woman went back to the town, said to the people, come see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? They came out of the town and made their way toward him. Did you know that cities are filled with broken hearts? Some people who are going through tough times tend to fill their lives with darkness. In cities, we encounter young people who are trapped in the world of drugs, other who are influenced of gangs, and some who are battling abuse and mistreatment. You can see young and old people who seem utterly lost with no idea of which path to take. They're broken inside and desperately seeking an opportunity to change. Let us follow Christ's example and share the good news of salvation. Now, what does it really mean for Jesus to be a friend of sinners? It means that he is our friend and is waiting for us to acknowledge his presence and willingness. God's love for us goes beyond, way beyond what we can imagine. It is interesting that the title, Friend of Sinners, was given to Jesus by the religious leaders of his time. They criticized him for spending time with the marginalized and so socially unacceptable people, and that is why they called him a friend of sinners. For example, on one occasion, the scribes and Pharisees murmured against Jesus. Do you know why? Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to fear him. And the Pharisees and scribe, scribes mur murmured, saying, This man receiveth, receiveth sinners and eateth with them. In the face of these criticisms, Jesus did not defend himself, but told a parable that illustrates how much God loves those who have fallen. Then he spoke this parable to them, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, 
does not leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejo re <laughs> sorry. Rejoice with me, for I, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say to you that likewise there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 persons who need no repentance. Jesus, the divine shepherd, goes through cities in search of the lost, the broken, and the fallen, those with broken hearts due to life's blows and traumas. Why do I believe that Jesus lifts up the fallen? He lifted up the adulterous woman. He found a woman trapped in adultery, and instead of condemning her, he said, He who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her. The crowd dispersed, and Jesus told the woman that he did not condemn her, and that she should sin no more. He lifted up the, per the paralytic at the pool of Bethesda. On another occasion, Jesus found a woman who had been sick and bedridden for 38 years. Jesus told him, rise up, take up your bed, and walk. And the man was instantly healed. He lifted up Zacchaeus, the tax collector. Zacchaeus was despised for his occupation and reputation as a sinner. When Jesus visited him, Zacchaeus was moved and decided to give half of his goods to the poor and restore fourfold to those who he had defrauded. In each of these examples, Jesus demonstrates his ability to lift up the fallen and offer them hope, regardless of their circumstances or past sins. He teaches us there is always an opportunity for forgiveness, healing, and transformation in his presence. Let us follow these examples. Rise and seek out the fallen in your city, community, school, and church. Introduce or reintroduce them to Jesus, the friend of the sinners. Amen. Please stand. Closing him would be 317. Leading me to Calvary. to bear 
before Brother Rita comes to pray, I'm going to ask one of our elders to pray for our youth. Can the youths please come to the front? And then Brother Rita will pray afterwards. All the youth, please come to the front. We're going to sing the last stanza of Lest I Forget. heavenward O loving heavenly father we give thanks O God to thee and thee alone O father you have given us the youths and they are young and strong Lord and when they are young they need to be used for you we give O God the, the leadership of the youth um, department today as she led out in a mighty way. Oh Lord, bless the young people in a very special way. Oh Father, let their focus be on Jesus continually. Oh God, lead them in the ways of righteousness. And may whatever they do, whatever they say, whatever they think, will be pleasing in thy sight. O oh, loving Lord, bless them in a mighty way now and continue to lead them. Let them have that love in their hearts for Jesus. And may the Holy Spirit, O oh God, abide in their hearts, we pray. Bless them in a mighty way. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let us pray. O oh, sweet Heavenly Father, you have brought us here today despite of the weather to celebrate and lift up our name. Heavenly Father, you have laid a blessing upon our hearts. We have sing praises to you today. And we have heard a message from one of our youths. She have given us the charge to follow the leader, the leader which is Christ Jesus, O Lord. And in your word, you have said, the youth shall lead them. And as we follow the message of Sister Mahalia today, I pray that you give us the strength to do so, Lord, because we can do nothing without thy will. Heavenly Father has some of us may break we pray that your presence will remain with us. And we pray that your presence will remain with the youth. You have said, remember thy creator in the days of thy youth. And we give thanks that today these youths that are present here and that are present online have found it in their heart to remember you on this old blessed day, O Lord. And we ask that you continue to keep their hearts and their minds set upon you. And for our holy youths, I pray that you do the same for us, O Lord. Bless and keep us, we pray. Through your Son, Jesus Christ's name, amen. <laughs> 